Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to continue talking about the radial nerve. So we talked about how it originated from the brachial plexus. It specifically originates from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, and then it's going to course into the radial groove of the triceps and really just travel down that radial groove, being held in place by the triceps brachii. Now, this picture, you might not notice it, this nerve right there, that I, where my mouse is, that's actually the radial nerve. Okay? This one right here should actually be musculocutaneous, because recall that musculocutaneous nerve sits between biceps brachii superficially and then this muscle, which ought to be brachialis. Okay? This one would have to be the radial nerve, because first of all, this one is the uh, median nerve. This one is ulnar over here. And so this would be musculocutaneous, this would be radial nerve over here, not to mention it's more on the posterior side, opposite the median nerve, and we can see it in contact with the humerus in this cross section. And presumably, if we follow the radial nerve down through here, we can't see it, we're going to see it emerge right here. And so that was just to give you some perspective here, but we can see the radial nerve right here emerge, and we follow it down really to this point right here. And before it gets to that point, it does give off a couple of branches to some muscles, in particular brachioradialis, which you can see pulled back here, um, then also extensor carpi radialis longus, and so on and so forth. But in any case, we follow this nerve, gives off a couple muscular branches, and then it stops. And the better term would actually be bifurcates into two separate nerves with very different functions. And when I say different, I mean night and day. One's purely sensory, one is purely motor. Okay, so this one right here, this is the motor part. This is the deep branch of the radial nerve. Okay, this one right here, if we follow it, this one is the superficial branch of the radial nerve, and this one is purely sensory. Okay, now the superficial branch of the radial nerve really doesn't do a whole lot until it gets to the hand, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, the deep branch is what we want to talk about more here. Okay, so here's our deep branch of the radial nerve. You can see right here that it's going to enter into this little tunnel. We can actually zoom in there. It's not great resolution, but this muscle right here is called the supinator muscle. It's a deep muscle of the anterior forearm. And within the supinator, there's a little slit, kind of a hole, and it turns out the deep radial nerve can actually enter through that hole. Okay, now when it enters into this hole, it enters into basically a tunnel. It's kind of like when you're driving in your car and there's a big tunnel, right? There's obviously an entrance to the tunnel and then there's actually being in the tunnel itself. Going through the tunnel itself, this is just called the supinator tunnel because it goes through the supinator muscle. But the opening to that tunnel, that supinator tunnel, is just referred to as the arcade of Frosch. So what we might say is that the deep branch of the radial nerve enters past the arcade of Frosch into the supinator tunnel. And it's not going to exist in that supinator tunnel for very long. Um, you can actually see here in this picture, same thing. Um, here's the supinator muscle, and you can see this tunnel right here. Okay, So the deep branch of the radial nerve enters in through the arcade of Frosch into the supinator tunnel. And when we look at this picture, this is an anterior view. If we follow that deep branch of the radial nerve, or deep radial nerve, through the supinator tunnel, the tunnel is going to kind of guide it around to the posterior aspect of the forearm, as you can see right here. And we can see it emerge from that supinator tunnel, and when it emerges out of the supinator tunnel, it has changed names. It's now the posterior interosseous nerve. Okay? The posterior interosseous nerve is not a branch, it's just a continuation of the deep radial nerve. Okay? Um, and it changes names as soon as it leaves the supinator tunnel. So this deep branch really doesn't exist for very long. Okay? It's going to emerge from the supinator tunnel and change names to posterior interosseous nerve. And it'll pretty much just run down the posterior aspect of the forearm, and it'll get roughly right here, and then it'll just terminate. It doesn't actually go into the hand to innervate anything. It really just innervates all these extensor muscles minus a few. And when we talk about the extensor muscles of the forearm, we'll see that most of them are actually innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve. Okay. Now for the superficial branch. Okay. Here's our superficial branch of the radial nerve, and um, when we're looking at this nerve, um, it's definitely under some muscles. Okay, It's not like it's just underneath the skin, but it is superficial relative to the deep 
branch of the radial nerve. Okay, Just know that it for a while is going to course under some muscles, in particular this one right here which is brachioradialis. In fact in this picture they've kind of taken this part of it and peeled it back, not only so you can see the bifurcation and the deep branch, but also because the superficial branch is really running kind of right underneath the brachioradialis. Okay? And this superficial branch is 100% sensory. It does not innervate a single muscle, and it really isn't going to do much until it gets to the hand. So let's actually follow the course of this superficial radial nerve, keeping in mind that it's going to be mostly underneath the brachioradialis muscle. Okay? So here we've sort of peeled off that muscle because all we see is the supinator, and so we can follow the superficial radial nerve all the way down the forearm. Okay, now it's obviously being cut here, but it's pretty much just going to be running underneath brachioradialis the entire time. Okay, but obviously brachioradialis is going to terminate somewhere. Okay, so for that we go to this picture. So right here we can see the superficial branch of the radial nerve. For the most part it's been running underneath brachioradialis, but right here when it gets close to the wrist it's going to emerge from underneath all these muscles and then it's going to run even more superficially as it goes toward the hand. Now you'll notice a few things here. One, here we have the extensor retinoculum. Uh, remember that's a bundle of connective tissue, fibrous connective tissue that runs over these extensor tendons and keeps them in place and keeps them from bowing. You can even see that this superficial radial nerve is going to go superficial to that extensor retinaculum. And then right as it gets to that extensor retinaculum, about two-thirds of the distance across, it's going to branch. Okay? And some of those branches are going to go toward um, the lateral digits right here, and then some are going to go to the thumb. And in general, what these branches are doing is they're collecting sensory information from the thumb and maybe the second and third digits and relaying that back to the central nervous system for interpretation. To really understand this, let's take a look at this picture right here. This is showing the three nerves that relay sensory information from the hand back to the central nervous system. And there's three ulnar, median, and radial. Now what I want you to keep in mind is that the ulnar nerve and median nerve are both mixed nerves. Okay, They have both motor functions and they have a sensory function. So for example, the median nerve, this one actually innervates the thenar muscles, which are right here, and control movements of the thumb, or the first digit. And there's a, there's a couple others that they innervate. Ulnar nerve actually provides most of the innervation to the muscles in the hand. When you see radial nerve here, it's implied that it is the superficial branch. Why? Because the deep branch of the radial nerve does not have any sensory function. Okay. Additionally, remember the deep branch of the radial nerve becomes the posterior interosseous nerve, and that nerve doesn't even make it to the hand. So there's no way that the deep radial nerve, or even what it becomes here, can innervate muscles in the hand. Only the superficial radial nerve makes it to the hand, and it's purely sensory, whereas these first two are mixed. So just keep that in mind. This is superficial radial nerve in red. And really what we can see here is that other than the distal halves of digits 1, 2, and 3, which are provided by the median nerve, the superficial radial nerve really is providing sensory information from the lateral dorsal half of the hand. So here's the dorsal half of the hand. This is palmar over here. There's not really much on the palmar side that is um, sensed by the superficial radial nerve. Maybe a little bit on the thenar eminence right here. Okay, but nothing else. So when we look at this, here's the dorsal part of the hand. It's really just going to be the lateral half, and lateral meaning closest to the thumb. So all this in red is going to be supplied and sensed by the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Okay? And so really with the radial nerve, what we can see here is that once it divides, it really is a division of labor where the deep branch is purely motor and the superficial branch is purely sensory. And to keep those straight, remember superficial and sensory both start with an S, so that can help you keep that uh, straight in your mind. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the radial nerve and its branches. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.